Hello, welcome back. We've actually had a, a huge volume of calls tonight, especially on that rape in Hertfordshire. About 275 calls just on that one case alone, and I'm afraid it's, it's been jamming the switchboard both here and at the incident room on that case at Welling Garden City. And that's uh, the case at which we start. So. And just to remind you, this was the abduction and rape of a woman on her way home from work. On Monday the 2nd of December, she was walking from Stevenage Railway Station to where she'd parked her car. That was about half a mile away. A man attacked her and forced her to drive him towards London. Drive. During that time, she was raped. Now, Mr Todd, we've had a huge response, as Nick said, to this particular case. What sort of information have you had from it? A variety of information. We've had a large number of sightings of the beggar uh, in all different parts of the country. People that witnessed the crash at the garage, the man running down Goldings Hill, but even more excitingly, over 60 people in the studio calls alone have given indications as to who they think the rapist is. So you and now have a large quantity of names to yes, check Yes, they'll, they'll all be investigated, yes. Just once more, could we see uh, a picture of um, the rapist and you'll have your description of him again? Yes, he's a man of between 19 and 25 years of age. He's about 5 foot 8 inches tall. He's got mousy brown hair, collar length with a centre parting. He's wearing this distinctive grey sweatshirt with a dark grey or black band around it and he's carrying a black nylon rucksack. So I know we've had quite a few calls on that, but we still need more calls. If yes, you think you recognise that man, that would be terrific. And, and just remember that the date is Monday the 2nd of December that we're talking about. Thanks. Next, we appeal to your help with the inquiry into the death of John Threlfall at his home in Lancashire. Earlier that day at the little garage, a stranger asked directions to John's house. Do you know where Coniston Road is? Now, she was uh, one of several strangers who were seen in the area that time. You've had, uh, again, a very large volume of calls, some of which trying to identify these uh, visitors, but nothing terribly specific that I'd seen earlier on. No, that's right. Um, the calls in the studio have been coming in, and the, the call has been keeping my colleagues in the incident room busy. But there's nothing concrete. We've had one interesting call, um, which may give a new line of inquiry, and that's regarding the motive. Um, but we've had nothing concrete about the people who were seen nearby. The one about the motive was from someone who actually knew John? Well, that's right. That's now, right. Of the people that you, you needed to trace, there was that, that woman, there was a, a man yeah. also in a tuxedo uh, who was asking the uh, directions to the same road where John lived. There was a man who was running down the A6, and we had an artist's impression of that. Did you get uh, any people ringing in on that? No, we haven't had any calls on the running man, um, which is rather disappointing. We really do need to find out who he was, and we could do with more calls on that. I would ask people, if you know something, if you think you know something, don't rely on somebody else to ring us. Please ring us. OK, Mr Cooch, good luck with it. Thank you. Well, out of our incident desk cases, David, you've been collating the calls. First of all, there was the murder of David Boss outside his home. He was giving some money to charity. This was in Walthamstow in East London. Have you had any information on that? Yes, sir, we certainly have. We've had a large number of calls, a lot of them about vagrants and a lot of them about people all over the country who, who call us think match the video fit. Actually officers think that our suspect or our offender is probably still very much in the London area but all the calls we've had will be checked out. What we still need is calls from the London area about that guy. Linking into that one caller has actually phoned to say they're sure the man that we've shown is actually the same man who committed another crime in the area of where David Boss was murdered so that one looks promising. Good. Then there was the armed robbery at the uh, post office in the High Street at Torquay. You were looking for two men. Yes, officers on this case have been inundated with calls as well. Another witness has come forward that's, who thinks they saw the getaway car, that Fiat you know, um, being driven away. So there may be a better description to add to the, the ones we have. A number of calls have given names that match that video fit that we showed. Uh, and one in particular links in with what the officers already know. So that's one of those good ones, Sue. And then also a number of calls about that yellow helmet. But anybody else who thinks they might be able to identify the origin of that, then please still call. We want to hear about that. And the last case was the rape of the schoolgirl on her paper round in Hampshire earlier this month. Yeah, another dreadful case, Sue. 40 calls here and 30 at the incident room. A lot in, in relation to the video fit, giving names to the offender. And a number of those are being checked out now. Also a number of calls about that maroon taxi that we mentioned. Uh, that were seen in the area, they're being followed up, but we still would like to hear from any taxi drivers of maroon cabs who are in th that area, or indeed passengers. Please do call if you know something. Nick. 
Still uh, no respite in the call. They're coming in fast and furious. Uh, next photo call, how are we doing on it? Well, all four cases have brought a tremendous response. Uh, the first one, the lady of the red coat cashing cheques in Scotland. 16 calls altogether, four giving names and two giving the same name. So that sounds very positive. What about our, our plumber or, or supposed plumber, Nathan Clifford Miller? Yes, um, recent sightings in Yorkshire, Humberside and Leeds. In fact, someone who's been conned today by someone fitting his description, so they may be able to give f f valuable information, good information again on the van, which is being checked as we speak. Good. The bogus uh, BT engineer, the telephone engineer, we had a huge volume of calls, and a lot of them Tremendous. coming from East London and placing them in the East London area. Absolutely. Um, one giving a caller who gave a possible name, gave details that the police knew but hadn't given out on air, so that sounds very positive. And uh, two others giving the same name, so we're definitely fingers crossed on that one. A man who was wanted in connection with an inquiry into some sex offences, uh, David Bryan London. Yes, we've had uh, 15 calls to the studio and 10 to the incident room, and again, still coming in. Lots of recent sightings, and one the officers are very excited about. I can't say too much now, but it is being checked out as we speak, so perhaps good news next month. Jackie, thank you. And finally, the armed robbery of a security van in the midst of the hustle and bustle of the City of London. On Friday the 18th of October, two Group 4 guards making a routine call at the National Westminster Bank in High Holborn were held up at gunpoint. The robbers escaped in two getaway cars which had been stolen three months earlier and Mr Murphy, you were hoping in particular for calls on those cars. Have you had any information? That's right, sir. We've had a number of sightings of the cars but unfortunately, as of yet, nobody's been able to tell us how the damage to the Peugeot was caused and we would like to know this. So if somebody's watching who, who was involved perhaps with a, an accident with a white Peugeot, we're looking at a time period between the 17th of July and the 18th of October. Uh, you've heard from the motorcyclist who uh, helped the courier who was knocked off his bike. We have indeed. He telephoned in this evening. He's helped to clear up a number of points and we'll be speaking to him first thing tomorrow morning. Because apparently without realising it, he saw the whole robbery. Absolutely, he saw everything. Um, and does anybody finally think they know either of the men involved? We have had a number of suggestions put forward as a result of the descriptions and photo fit. Some of them are very interesting indeed and we'll be working on them straight away. And the description of the gunman again? Quickly. He's 35 years of age, 5 foot 7 inches tall, well built, fair wavy curly hair and he had stubble on his face. If you know him, please ring us. Mr Murphy, thanks. There, there really is so much coming through, we can't... Uh, Tell you it all, but let me just quickly update you on the reappeal we had into the murder of Steve Johnson. If you remember, he was the, the taxi driver who was murdered 13 months ago near Stoke on Trent. Now, although it's 13 months ago, an enormous number of calls on this, 10 of which are really regarded as quite important, uh, which have at attempted to identify the artist's impression, and all of those are going to be checked out. That was a, a shirt sleeve man who was seen in the area, and indeed, there's been another witness who's come forward now for this shirt sleeve man, even though, as I say, it was over a year ago quite a good witness who may have been able to give us some more details. Good stuff, and that's all we have time to tell you so far. The lines here are staying open until midnight, and in fact a surprising amount of information does continue to come in through local numbers for days or sometimes weeks after the programme, and you'll see those numbers on your screen in a moment. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching, and uh, thank you for helping. Don't have nightmares, do sleep well. Good night. Good night.